Hello there, and welcome back to Navigating Patterns. What I'd like to talk about today are principalities. Now, Jonathan Peugeot and Paul van der Klee like to talk about powers and principalities, and this really aggravates me because uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, and I did my video on power, uh, and uh, that was due to a revelation in speaking with somebody, and likewise, uh, principalities, I finally got a, a handle on it, uh, thanks to Skyler on the Discord server, and uh, listening to PVK's uh, Q&A, Paul Van Der Klee's Q&A, uh, and that really shook something in me, and I, and I finally think I can explain this now uh, in an intelligible way. And when we're on about principalities, what, we're, what I think we're talking about is non-material agents. Uh, they're in the imaginal right and uh that's what i'd like to go into some detail about is how these principalities interact with us why people talk about them uh where the intersection is between us and these so-called principalities <laughs> When I say they're non-material agents, an agent is something that has some way of exerting force or influence or control in the world. And these principalities are primarily by agreement because they're in the imaginal realm. They're not necessarily real things. Um, and your interaction with them has a real effect, even though they're not real things. They also tend to have their own independent collective intelligence uh, that you can outsource to. But the problem is they have no ethical stance because they have no values. Uh, all of the values in a principality come from you. And so what really are these? Like, wh wh what is this, this magical secret? Well, I think the principalities are structures, basically. And then when you have a structure and you imbue it with power, see my, see my video on, on power, yes, uh, that would be good. Uh, when you imbue it with power, uh, or when anybody imbues it with power, then you have something that becomes a principality. Now, in my uh, three frames video, uh, I, I outline the three major principalities, but there are these sort of minor principalities, if you will. And uh, an example of this is, you know, people talk about the hand of the market. There is a hand of the market. The market doesn't control us, but it does influence us. And that influence can be positive or negative, but the market isn't an ethical actor. It doesn't have any values. It can't do bad things. Bad things can happen as the result of its influence and control. Uh, so one way the market controls you is that the market controls gas prices. Well, what's the market? It's like, well, one aspect of the market is you know, whatever the gas gas pipeline is, right? So there's, you got to drill for oil. You've got to refine, the, you've got to get the drilled oil uh, partially cleaned up. You've got to ship it somehow, some way to a place where they do a bunch of work with chemicals and turn it into gasoline, right? Then that has to be shipped to a gas station, right? And then there's gas stations have to make money. Um, and gas stations, by the way, primarily make money by selling cigarettes and lottery tickets, not gasoline. Uh, so, uh, or at least the ones, the ones I know about. Um, and, and there's different business models in each of those sectors, if you will. So it's part of the market. So the market controls what you pay for gas. Sure. Um, the market also has an influence on what you pay for gas in that because all of the actors don't make money in exactly the same way, some gas ends up cheaper than other gas. And then the expenses of each individual business, so, right? So what ends up happening is that the market isn't one thing. It doesn't have one mind. It doesn't have one point of control, right? It's part of a principality. Uh, and that principality is the structure that's grown up around the market. 
And we imbue that structure with power because, and this, this does happen, if you stop buying things, those industries vanish. That part of the market dies. So principalities aren't necessarily going to live forever, right? They, 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 because they get our power from us and that power, just like the principality itself, has no ethics, is neither good nor bad, then when we stop giving it our time, energy, and attention, those are the three components of power, uh, then it goes away. And I, this happens all the time. Like entire industries vanish. Like uh, the instant film industry went away, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, not entirely, but it used to be sort of like a thriving, profitable business. And now it's I think there's one company. Right. Um, and so that market at least shrunk, if not went away entirely, uh, you know, partly due to digital photography or whatever. There's lots of reasons why, you know, it's, but, but again, if a new shiny thing comes along that does roughly what the old thing does, that principality is weak in relation to the new one. And when you stop paying attention, it goes away. Now it can come back, maybe, maybe, sort of depends on a lot of factors, but principalities can come and go. Now, one of the problems is that with a principality, because there's a structure there, it can become corrupt. It can become corrupt by bad actors. It can become corrupt by bad intentions. So if everybody seeks to game the market in some way, let's say the stock market, um, like, I don't know, we'll just throw out a random example that has nothing to do with real life, like GameStop, right? It, so this guy over leverages himself, literally spends more money than he has, than he can cover, which shouldn't be allowed because he was a billionaire, but anyway. Um, and then people see that and they say, well, we're gonna game this system because this system's corrupt, right? So the system was already corrupt they come in, bet against the guy, and then enough of them did it, and they won. And the billionaire basically goes bankrupt, or hopefully he went bankrupt. Uh, he at least lost more money than he could cover, uh, which is always a good thing for bad people who are corrupting the system and abusing it and misusing it. Um, and you can argue, you know, the people that did that to him are bad actors, but actually the bad actors were already there, and all they did was correct the system. Like, oh, you wanna let people over leverage? Well, then we'll do the same trick and we'll win. And they did because it's more efficient not to over leverage, right? And so many people can bring down one billionaire. It's actually not that hard. So the market, in that case, the stock market or that aspect of the stock market anyway, was corrupted. And it was corrupted by this way of interacting, right? Probably due to greed, among other things, or, or maybe just due to neglect. I mean, a lot of people don't pay attention when somebody finds a loophole in a system, and you'll always find a loophole in a system. You can always find a loophole. Uh, and then if you're not paying attention, if you're not revivifying the structure and checking it continuously, then it can become corrupt. And sometimes principalities become corrupt because they aim at themselves. They're like, okay, look, um, you know, we're the, uh, uh, we're the ATF. We're a, a, a alcohol, tobacco, and firearms department. And that means that we can just go around and like take people's guns. And then it turns out that no, you can't actually do that. And people will go after you if you do. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, you know, they believe their own press. Oh, we're a principality. We have all this power. No, you don't. You have the power you're granted. And when it's gone, it's gone. And you might not be able to get it back. But, you know, it, because you're a power, right? Because you have power as part of a principality, uh, you can get power used against you. So power is a two-way street. Like you got it and it can be used against you. It's really not a one-to-one -one thing. You, these things are not, principalities are not ruling your life to any great extent. They may have influence, they may have some control, some, but not ultimate control. And fair enough. But usually when we interact with principalities, it's a trade-off. We're making a trade-off. If you want to buy from Amazon, you can buy from Amazon. What's the trade-off? Well, you know, if you've got Prime, like I do, uh, then you get movies and music and fast shipping automatically, all right? And then uh, they know your address. They know your credit cards. Actually, they know all my addresses because sometimes I travel and I get things shipped to where I am and not where I live. Um, and you just click a button and boom, and it's, it takes no time at all to get all the stuff that you normally want to get. Can't get everything, but you can get close to everything. And you know, it's convenience. And then what am I trading off? 
Well, who even knows? <laughs> I'm not just trading off money. Sometimes I'm not getting the best deal on my products because they don't always give you the best deal, by the way. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, they don't, especially where I live, they don't always make their shipping dates. Uh, sometimes they say they're going to ship something and uh, they just miss. These things happen. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with my data. I know that they have the world's worst marketing uh, program that markets to me things that nobody would ever buy more than one of ever. Uh, so, you know, I, I mean, it's a little annoying because I'm getting ads for things that aren't relevant. If I got relevant ads, I'd be happier with the little principality of Amazon. But, and, and Amazon's another one, right? It's corrupted because it's looking at itself as like some great retailer, um, which I don't think it is. Uh, so to some extent, they believe their own press. Oh, we're this big juggernaut powerhouse company that's going to take over the world. And it turns out that their tech is a mess and nobody stays more than 18 months because nobody can stand to work there. And you know, they don't even have enough bathrooms for people. So, you know, it's a corrupt organization to some extent. And, and they're allowing that to happen, right? Like they're not getting better, right? They're not revivifying themselves. And if there's no revivification, then, then that's a problem. And then what's another sort of principality? Uh, so a lot of people talk about justice and the blindness of justice. And of course that has two sides. But again, as with everything else, if, if the justice system is corrupted, if the people who work there aren't being ethical actors, then the corruption will kind of sneak in. And that's sort of inevitable. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have to call it out. You have to revivify it, right? Uh, going to court takes for a speedy trial. <laughs> Don't count on it. Five years, six years, who knows? Um, you know, just enough time for people to destroy evidence, by the way. Uh, very convenient for, for evildoers and very bad for people who aren't. Uh, and, and that's a problem. Like, you know, the, the, these things have become, because they haven't been challenged, right? Because, oh, it's, it's the justice system. It must be good. It's like, no, justice is just the justice system. Is it good? It's only good when it's aimed at the good. Principalities are only what they're aimed at, plus who's in them, plus the power that's given to them. That's all they are. So again, they're not good nor bad necessarily, unless you put you know, bad intent into them. If you aim them at the bad, uh, if, if, if you allow bad actors to be in them, then to that extent, they are bad. They're not all bad. They don't have to be bad. They can be made good. They can be purified, if you will, uh, although we're kind of in dangerous territory there, I suppose. But you have to work at it because principalities are structures and structures need maintenance. You can't just count on a structure to be that way forever because entropy exists in the universe, at least as near as I can tell. And that means that you need to work at it. You need to revivify them. You need to call them out when they're not doing their their, their jobs, right? And, and because you're outsourcing something to that principality, right? We outsource our justice to the justice system. We outsource a bunch of the trading that we need to do with people to the market. Right. Like it's it's very hard to see how you would get gas if you had to make it locally. And it wasn't mostly made in Texas, at least in the case of the U.S. Um, it's very hard to see how those things would would come about otherwise or at least come about as cheaply. Like w without the scale of farming we do in the U.S., food here would cost a bloody fortune uh, because it's cheaper to produce it on mass and ship it quickly via truck and train uh, than it is to have a bunch of little farms everywhere because some places the soil's depleted and uh, and managing that soil's different and more expensive and you know and that can be an advantage sometimes buying local food is way cheaper and better it, it all depends be, just your variety of food shrinks when you have to you know buy food from a certain area so these principalities like the market that has a bunch of I would argue a bunch of little markets in it, uh, are very handy and we use them all the time. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway here is that when you're talking about powers and principalities, well, principalities have power. You might see my power video to understand power better, right? That's through time, energy, and attention, roughly speaking. Um, and that's coming from the people involved in the system, not the people in the system. So people run the principality, but 
they're they're the ones keeping the structure good, right? They're not the only ones. Like the people outside who give it power, right? If you if you again, if you refuse to adhere to the justice system, and some people do, although sometimes the FBI comes after you, sometimes not. Uh, it all depends. M more people are are getting away with it than than you would possibly imagine. Uh, the FBI can't chase everybody, uh, and and you know you don't have to you don't have to cohere. Uh, you don't have to go to court if you're summoned. Uh, you, there may be downstream consequences, but you'd be surprised how many people don't go to court when summoned and nothing happens to them ever. Um, uh, you might have to modify how you live, but principalities can be ignored uh, and, and sometimes to great effect and sometimes not. And it's up to you, your level of involvement. It's up to you to imbue the principality with power. If you take that power away or if you fight the principality with power, which I don't, particularly recommend, although that can be effective too, uh, then, you know, the principality may improve, right? Or, or, or it may get uh, dismantled in favor of a more efficient structure, a more efficient principality. That certainly happens. And just as a note, uh, so there's still sort of three, uh, yeah, one, two, three frames, right? That I have a video about, which is there, there, the, the, the proper sort of high-level higher uh, principalities above everything, right? There's the theological, right, which is roughly in the ethereal realm, right? And, and that's what allows you to co-create with the, with the ideal, right? And that's where ethics is. And then below that, there's the political hierarchy, right? The political principality. That's in the material realm that manages the participation in, in, uh, of humans, Right. And then there's the economic, which is the which is the principality, the, the hierarchy of human co-creation. Like it's the it's the grease or the juice that allows us to trade efficiently. And trade is part of co-creation. So there's co-creation with the ideal at the top. There's the material realm of participation in the political, which roughly speaking, allows us to implement the ethics that, that are at the top. Right. And among other things. And then there's the economic, which is just the trade, which is the way we actually make the co-creation happen. And then those are the three sort of big, like high level principalities. The rest of the principalities are much smaller structures. All of these are imbued with power. And but the power comes from us. And that, I think, should give you a good idea of principalities. Maybe it's not complete. Let me know in the comments if you've got more questions, if you need you know, more clarification. But I think when you think about the hand of the market and justice is blind and you, you think about things like Amazon as a force in the world, those are definitely principalities that we can take seriously and pay attention to because they can become corrupt because people are corrupt and ent entropy corrupts things and uh, corrupt people can get inside of things. Uh, so we all have to be vigilant because really... From my mind, the best way to make the world a better place is for you to become a better person. And hopefully with these videos, one of the things I'm doing is getting you to think about your role, your proper role in interacting with all these things so that you can make those things that you interact with better by being a better person. And that's how it all sort of fits together. And... I hope this was helpful. Um, I, I hope that if you have questions or, or curiosities or you want to see something specific, you'll comment uh, in the comments section. And if you're finding these videos useful and you think somebody else might find them useful, please let them know. Subscribe, like the video, um, put in any, any, any comments you want. Uh, tell other people about what I'm doing here because I'm, I'm trying to do this for as many people as I can, obviously, because I can't talk to everybody live on Discord or live in person or, or you know, over Clubhouse or whatever. So this is sort of the stopgap for that so that people can catch up quickly and sort of understand maybe what their proper role is, what their proper responsibility is in the world. And it's very important to me that you realize the power um, and, and, and get the proper sense of appreciation that I have for 
the fact that you're giving my videos and my channel your time and attention. Thank you.